Hey guys, I am Game Advisor, and welcome back to another Myth of Empires video. Today we're going to be talking about 10 tips for not just new and beginning players, but also for intermediate and experienced ones. There'll be a lot of things in here you may not have known of, so make sure to comment down below if there's anything you learned or anything I missed out on that you think I should have mentioned. With that being said, let's start out with number one. First on the list today is one of the most important ones overall, which is just to simply get to level 16 and get to the PvP servers quickly if you have any desire to play on them whatsoever. The sooner you get there, the sooner you're going to get more items and more XP. There's an increased amount of resource drop there, so it is extremely beneficial for you to go out of your way and to get there as quickly as possible without wasting any time. Next on the list is that you do damage based on your momentum in this game. Now, let me explain what I mean. Let's say you're riding a horse and using a polearm. These are two very important skills that relate to this. When you're riding, if you go ahead and swing that polearm or you go ahead and couch your weapon and manage to hit somebody, you're then going to go ahead and do additional damage based if you just hit them while standing on the ground or sitting still on your horse. The speed at which you are moving is directly related to how much damage you're going to do. This also counts for if your opponent is riding towards you on a horse, you will both do more damage. That also means you'll take more damage. This works the same way you would imagine it would in physics or real life. When something is moving at you and you're moving at it, the damage is usually significantly higher in the destruction versus if one is standing still and the other is moving towards it or both are standing still and only using the strength of their arms. This is why it's extremely important to get your pole arms and riding skill up as the faster your horse goes and the more damage you can do with pole arms, the bigger the multiplier gets. Following that is number three, which is to sell things at your banner for money. This can also apply to your guild boundary markers, but the idea here is you're gonna go in there, you're gonna select the items you wanna sell, and then you'll be able to sell them. Do keep in mind this is only raw resources, but it is a great way to get copper coin as it resets every single day. Fourth on the list is that you should always be buying your XP blessings every single day. This is because it dramatically increases the amount of XP you get. I believe the minimum if you buy both, which they do stack by the way, is about double XP. However, with guild buffs, this can go even higher, getting all the way up to triple and even close to quadruple XP with enough points in it. With that being said, you can also increase your warrior's XP, you can increase your horse's XP, you can increase your own skill individual XP rather than just character level. There's a lot of things here that could be very beneficial, but the most important one is to get that character XP until you hit max level. Alrighty, we're halfway there with number five, which is to get your subordinates or vagrants, whatever you want to call them, to mine for you. If you don't know how to do this, you're going to need to be able to unlock the mining hut. You're then going to want to go ahead and find a place to put it down that has a good amount of resources, which you can check with the shovel. Then go ahead and place it on that spot after creating the shaft with the mining pickaxe and have your vagrant work it. All he needs is food and you will get a steady supply of ore or salt or whatever it is you decided to get from that shaft that it has available to it. Now, this this may not seem like a lot of income at the beginning, but if you go to sleep and then wake up and he's had, say, a stack of 100 food in there, you're very likely to find 5 or 600 iron ore on even some of the lesser mines. This also works for copper ore. This works for, again, all the different ores in the game. You just have to find the spots to place it. Sixth on our list is that you want to smack a tied up NPC for XP. If you don't know how to do this, it's the same way you would tame a bandit. You go ahead and knock him out, you tie him up to a pole, and then after a while, you're able to start smacking him, you give him some iron armor, you force feed him so he heals, and you'll start leveling your weapons. This is very useful because they can't hit back, and the only thing it's going to cost you is the materials to create your weapons, the food to feed him, and the armor. It's significantly easier than going out and trying to fight bandits and only getting maybe three or four hits on them before before they die in some cases. Seventh is that you want to move your expertise points around to what you're actually doing. Don't be afraid to move these, it's very cheap to do so. You get five free movements per week and then it slowly increases. As long as we're not moving things for something that you're only going to do for about 30 minutes, then it's definitely worth doing. If you want to level your archery skill a lot for say the next couple days, then go ahead and put those five points in there. Don't be afraid to spend them. The copper amount is relatively negligible, so it's not a big deal to have to spend copper on it. 
Eighth is just kind of a weird little tip I found, which is that you can fire ranged weapons. That includes throwing, that includes crossbows, that includes regular bows, off into the distance in order to level up the skill. It doesn't matter if you actually hit something or not. So what I like to do is I went ahead and made a bunch of crude bows, made a ton of stone arrows, and then just fired off into the distance and I got my range skill up very, very quickly. You can also fire at a wall if you want to. It's just firing in general. Number nine is to make sure you always use benches when you're crafting something in them. Of course, this doesn't have to be done. If you're crafting multiple things at the same time, it is what it is, but you get roughly a 10 to 20 times multiplier in your character XP if you're actually using the bench. You have to attach yourself to it, not just queue it up and walk away. It's a whole thing. There's a whole video I've done to talk about how to power level with this, but it is a huge amount of increase to your character XP. You will also level your crafting XP, which will shorten the crafting times when you're crafting whatever it is you're crafting. So if you have something that takes say two hours to craft like some of the advanced tables you can cut that down to usually about half an hour or even less depending on how high your crafting skill is. Now my very last tip for you guys today is probably the most important even if you guys don't like doing it and that is if you're going to play on a pvp server you need to join a very large guild. You can try to play by yourself, you can try to play with three to five even ten players but the reality is is you're going to be at a humongous disadvantage. For an example I am in a 100 plus player group and we still feel like we're relatively small when compared to some of our competitors. Not going to call it any names out there but I, we all know there are certain guilds that are well over a thousand players that cause problems for many other ones. So do keep that in mind when you are playing this game. If you want to succeed, the reality is, is you're going to have to join a community, join a guild, whatever it is that you can feel like you can trust and play with and have fun, but also be a contributor. It's just the reality of the game. If you wanna play on a PVP group, you pretty much have to do it. There's a, not much I can really say here. It is what it is, and I hope you guys are okay with that. If you're not, maybe just play some PVE. There's nothing wrong with that. Or go find a private server. That's also an option. But if you're playing on public servers, you've gotta find a big guild. Otherwise, you're gonna be at a humongous disadvantage. Alrighty, well, I am Game Advisor. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. And if you want to see more Myth of Empires content and games like it, do make sure to subscribe to the channel as we cover a lot of different survival games. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I am Game Advisor, and I will see you next time.